This is New Cap News with Nerman Isak. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Local RCMP are asking for the public's help as they search for a 16-year-old Lloydminster girl reported missing last week. Alexander Ball is described as 5'5", five five, weighing 120 pounds with brown shoulder-length hair. She was seen or she was wearing blue jeans, a t-shirt and red high-top sneakers at the time of her disappearance. Ball was last seen on the night of August 11th when she was getting into the passenger seat of an unknown vehicle at the co-op gas bar. Now, if you have any information about her whereabouts, you're asked to call the Lloydman's RCMP at 306-825-6350 or Crime Stoppers. Macklin RCMP are looking for a man responsible for a break and enter at a convenience store in the town. Police say it happened around 3 a.m. this past Monday where the male suspect broke through the main entrance glass door using a crowbar. Now, he allegedly stole more than 1,000 packs of cigarettes worth about $12,000. The man is described as heavier set, wearing gray sweatpants, a dark colored sweater, a camouflage hat and white gloves. The suspect appeared to drive a mid-2000 white four-door pickup truck. If you have any information on the whereabouts of the suspect, you're asked to contact Macklin RCMP at 306-753-2171. Well, it's not a new trend for many schools, but in this area, it's the first time we're seeing it. Laptops or iPads mandatory in the classroom. In Vermillion, J.R. Robson High School is launching the first Bring Your Own Device project in the coming year. And I could not wait to explain. Most parents are on board with the idea of technology as an integral part of classroom learning. It definitely helps. I think it's easier. Kids are more electronically inclined. Everything stays together instead of losing papers. <laughs> Kids are very good learning. Everything is computerized these days and in the workplace you have to use computers no matter what, you, uh, what your profession or what your job is. It's not like they don't have them now. Like kids have iPads and iPods and everything like that right now, so I guess it doesn't make a difference. It really wouldn't make a difference. I think it would actually cut back costs in the long run as far as buying a laptop from university and then get them used to it. But the big question is cost. If you can't afford, the board set up a policy in which they could, the parents could purchase over three years, which we warrant the product for three years as well. If nothing else, they'll be supplied with one from the school, which is that we have laptops in the school to supply them. They assign them out at the library. And students won't only have access to the educational resources, but quick access to, say, gaming sites as well. Restrictions will have to be put in place. And what will be done when it comes to this? One of the most popular one is uh, Norton Family, what they call. So it's a type of antivirus program that you can also have different settings to allow the child to use only certain applications. There are also some advanced features on some of them where you can actually lock out those type of features like games, social media. And officials are saying it will be beneficial for the learning styles in high school and will foster new creativity. We're looking at different ways of showing your learning and your knowledge. And so it could be a video, it could be a collage of pictures, write a song. I've seen that happen where, you know, you're asked to, okay, talk about the themes of this book or this poem. And the person wrote a song on GarageBand. It will. Uh, at least you've got a lot faster um, access to information. If they need to cross-reference any information or if they're looking for statistics or even uh, for different type of projects, they'll be able to access it a lot quicker on a wireless setting. And they can even hand in assignments over the over Wi-Fi networks, over the Internet. And as it's the first time students will have technology in their hand at all times during learning hours, officials say they'll evaluate the progress of the project throughout the year. Anna cannot fate. New Cap News. Well, the chance to buy lunch and support a great cause at the same time. Now, tomorrow, NW locations across Canada are raising money as they work towards ending multiple sclerosis. Is that everything for you? And would you like to donate to MS today? Yes, it's a question that will be heard a lot at A&W's in the city tomorrow. As staff kick off the sixth annual Cruise to End MS event. And while one dollar from every teen burger goes to the MS Society, staff say there are other ways to donate. You can actually come down to A&W and uh, get one of the little cutouts that we have for a dollar, two or five dollar donations. You can donate however much you want. Since it began, the event has raised more than $5 million nationwide for the Multiple Sclerosis Society. Now, last year, the Lloydminster and Vermilion restaurants raised just over $7,000. This year, the goal is 10000 
That volume of money clearly uh, makes a huge impact uh, in terms of people living with the disease and, and enables, um, like I said, um, further research um, as well as um, some supports locally for people who are dealing with symptoms. Now a portion of the money raised goes towards research. The rest will stay in the community, providing services to people living with MS.